Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have breaking news, all types of breaking news this morning. Let me quickly just give you the, the headlines. The Vatican has signed the actual uh, state agreement with the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, uh, in, uh, in the Vatican City. Also, there has been a beheading by an Islamic terrorist uh, in France, uh, according to French news there. And we have 27 people killed in two hotel attacks in Tanzania. Uh, let's get right to the main news here, the most important uh, biblical prophecy uh, that is, and that is the Vatican news on Reuters uh, this morning. They say the Vatican signs the first treaty with the state of Palestine. Israel is angered over this signing agreement. Thank God that they finally show uh, some, some um, anger in this because it's exactly what the Israelis should do. And of course, once the covenant is done with Israel, it will only last half of Daniel's 70th week, that is. Uh, this is not, by the way, this is not the covenant with Israel. And I have often wondered if that covenant has not already been signed in secret. But nonetheless, this is another step uh, in the process of making two states in uh, the country of Israel, turning it into two states or even two countries. Uh, let me read to you the article uh, noted here in Reuters by Philip uh, Polella. It says, the Vatican signed its first treaty with the state of Palestine on Friday, calling for courageous decisions to end the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and backing a two-state solution. Uh, the treaty, which made official the Vatican's de facto uh, recogn recognition of Palestine, Palestine since 2012, and, uh, angered Israel, which called it hasty step that damages the prospects for advancing a peace agreement. Well... We know it's quite clear that Israel has already signed agreements with Rome because they have given Mount Zion over to the Vatican, fulfilling another startling biblical prophecy in the book of Obadiah, something we'll look at here in just a moment because this is uh, very important. We are seeing news that is fulfilling biblical prophecy right before your eyes. We're going to go to that in just a moment. Uh, Israel also said it could have implications on its future diplomatic relations with the Vatican. It definitely will, halfway through the week. The accord which, uh, which concerns the Catholic Church activities in areas controlled by the Palestinian Authority also confirmed the Vatican's increasing, increasingly provocative role in foreign policy under Pope Francis. Last year, it brokered the historic resumption of ties between the United States and Cuba. Uh, Archbishop Paul Gallagher, the Vatican's foreign minister, said at the signing that he hoped it could be a stimulus to bringing in the definitive end to a long-standing Israeli-Palestinian conflict, which, which um, continues to cause suffering for both parties. Now, these uh, articles will be posted on Israeli News Live on our Facebook uh, uh, page of Israeli News Live, so you can check out the full article there. Let me just say this as well. The Vatican clearly has always stood for politics, controlling of world politics, and they've done so in the background for many, many, many years. Now, the Vatican nearly come to an end uh, several hundred years back uh, due to the French Revolution. And, but the thing is, is what's interesting, they have revived from their deadly wound. That's exactly right. Uh, if you're looking for the, the beast to have a deadly wound, that was when the Vatican nearly came down. There, there was no pope whatsoever at the time. Uh, after 325, uh, when in the common era, when uh, Constantine first began with the Mithras religion, the priests there, they began uh, to, to merge together with Christianity and made their own form of, uh, of Christianity and move forward. But then in the French Revolution, the Vatican took a severe wound to the head. Why the head? Because the Catholic Church is considered to be the head of all organizations. Organizations. They consider themselves to be in place of Christ on earth, Yahshua, that is, the Messiah, claiming to be the head, the leader of the world churches uh, to begin with, and also the creator of Islam. Um, as, uh, we, we must add that as well. Let's quickly look at the prophetic implications of this agreement that is being signed, uh, that was signed today. Uh, 
as well as, as I mentioned just a moment ago, about the Vatican actually fulfilling prophecy on Mount Zion. Now, if we go to Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 7, it says, Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate, and cut off from it him that passeth out, and him that returneth. That's exactly what happens. Mount Seir, it is a type of Edom, and clearly in Obadiah's prophecy from verse 7, it's a one chapter book from verse 7 on down, Esau is identified, for those that are not aware on this news broadcast, it, Esau is identified as being one that stood by during the destruction of Jerusalem, the house of Judah even defines that during 70 AD. He was as if he was one with them. God does reckon, reckon this to him through the prophet Obadiah, Esau, Jacob's brother. And of course, it was Titus, the Roman general that was one with the Syrians. They, they blame many times, historians blame the Syrians for the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple and not the Romans. And God agrees with that because he clearly defines that in the book of Obadiah that you, you were one with them though and puts the blame on Esau or the Romans in this case here because we know it was Titus the Roman general. And then God even says you carried away those things that belong to, to your brother. And they did. Uh, according to the Ark of Titus we can see clearly that the temple treasures were taken back to Rome. Now the Vatican was not in existence at the time, but Constantine, uh, later when the church was formed, in the catacombs under the Vatican is where these things actually are today. Now, let's go back to the prophetic uh, view of this. Uh, in verse 8 of Ob uh, Ezekiel chapter 35, it says, And I will fill his mountains with his slain men, and his hills and thy valleys, and all thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. Now remember, verse 7 is him that goes in and out. These are the diplomatic relations that are constantly being in the revolving door in Rome. The, the, all the different leaders of the world are going in and coming out, going in and coming out. Every leader, Muslim, uh, American, European leaders, kings, monarchs, dictates, all go to the Pope of Rome. They all seek his advice and also seek his uh, help in ending world conflicts. Even Shimon Peres, the former president of Israel, stated the only one that can bring peace to the Middle East is Pope Francis or the Pope of Rome. And this is his own statement. Uh, verse 9 says, I will make thee a perpetual desolation, and thy city shall not return, and you shall know that I am Hashem. That's God's own divine name in this particular point there, the Lord and King James. Because thou hast said, these two nations, here's the biblical fulfillment, these two nations, these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. Now, Ezekiel clearly identifies that Israel will be divided. We know this also from Joel. Joel also prophesies the dividing of Israel. And I'll take you to that in just a moment as well. But notice he says, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine. So Rome signing an agreement today with the Palestinian Authority or the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, has in effect made a second state in Israel or a second nation a second country and Israel already being a country now they're two nations they're two countries and he is swearing that they will both belong to him okay but God has clearly says that you did not know that I was there that shows that he doesn't have a revelation that God himself is the one that this land belongs to and he has given it to his children the children of Israel now we go into verse 11 therefore as I live saith the Lord God I even will do a according to thine anger and according to thy envy, which thou hast used out of thine hatred against them, and I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. So Israel, my brothers and sisters of Israel, I say this to you, you have, Kaumah Yehoah, you have, your own, you have it from God's own mouth through his prophet Ezekiel, that he's going to make himself known to you when he judges Rome here. And when will he judge Rome? Well, according to Obadiah, I believe it is, is that God will judge them when the whole earth rejoices. Now, let's just quickly take a peek at that. And it's, um, we find out that, um, um, 
that it says here that he will send in verse 21 of Obadiah and saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. That is at the final judgment. Now there's another place and I don't have time to find it yet. Uh, but we know that God does say that he will actually, when the whole earth rejoices, that he will actually bring them to a desolation. Uh, and, and, uh, but anyway, you can look that up as well and see that for yourself. Quickly, let's take a look at Joel. Um, that is another prophecy that is very important that I think we should bring out because uh, the United States has been very instrumental in, in actually causing the breakup of Israel uh, under uh, the leadership of John Kerry, uh, the uh, John Kerry who is the Secretary of State of the United States, uh, who began the nine-month negotia negotiations a little while back. Another prophecy that it fulfilled was that of um, Rebecca, when she goes before the Lord and says, Why am I thus? She has two children fighting in her womb. It's Esau and Jacob. And that's exactly prophetically what's happening now. That's why you see the fight between Israel and the Palestinian people, the Arab peoples there. Um, it is because it is a prophecy in the Word of God through Rebecca when she saw she had two children fighting in her womb and she goes before the God of Israel and says, Why am I thus? See, because why? It is showing that that Esau and Jacob would actually be fighting in this last days. Now that's not technically the Palestinians, but you have to remember Esau is Rome. And so what do I mean when I say the Palestinians and Israel fighting? It is Rome that is actually doing the fighting using the Palestinian people. And that is a shame. And I just say to the, to the Palestinian people there, are you aware that Rome is only using you? My Palestinian friend, that, would, that are willing to hear the word of Almighty God, I, uh, I, I, I beg of you, consider Yeshua to be your Messiah because this is nothing but the Vatican using you as a tool. It says in Daniel chapter 11 that the prince that shall come will be strong with a small people. And that small people are the Palestinian people, the Arabic people that are living in Israel that, that, that the Vatican has given the name of Palestinians. Uh, you're being used by Rome for the purpose uh, to be able to uh, to be able to cause this issue, the, these problems that are happening in Israel today, to fulfill biblical prophecy. So really, when we look at Esau and Jacob fighting in the womb, it's actually Israel and Rome fighting, but they're using the Palestinian people to actually make this come to pass. Now, in Joel, it says here, in verse 3, uh, chapter 3, excuse me, uh, for behold, in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Uh, and they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine uh, that they might drink. Again, as I said, the word drink there brings in the, again, the second prophecy that was fulfilled, and a, that also is in Obadiah. But notice the parting of the land. God is going to bring them down for judgment. Uh, and those that part Israel, God will part their land. And, and that may be what we see soon, even in the United States and all other nations that have been willing to divide Israel. God is going to bring judgment upon Israel them as well. Now, um, in Obadiah, again, one more verse we need to bring out that is that has been breaking news for months now, and that is another prophecy fulfilled right before your own eyes. That was in Obadiah chapter uh, 1 verse 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the nations, as thou hast done, it shall be done unto you. Thy reward shall return upon your own head. For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, see, for as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, remember Israel allowed the Vatican to conduct a communion service there in the upper room on, uh, on the Mount Zion. 
All right. Now in Hebrew, it is in that word you is in the plural masculine, showing that the communion service that day would have been by men only. According to Rome reports, their own news agency, it was only the Pope of Rome, his delegation and the uh, the the priest there that partook in that communion. It was no women involved later the following week in the week after and each week they have been doing the communion services there. It has then been inclusive because the next sentence is he says he says so shall all the nations are heathen drink continually see they is it is also gender inclusive in the plural as well and yes women then were allowed to partake in the communion services that they were doing but they also went to king david's tomb they they took it away from the jewish people the israeli forces came in and forced the jews out so that they could do a communion service there as well uh, showing that they have taken their seat at david's tomb uh, clearly as uh, benedict uh, excuse me pope benedict was given a, an official seat for the vatican for the papacy at the tomb of david that was news that came out uh, 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 I, I believe that was in 2013 is when that took place. So you're watching prophecy fulfilling itself in the news on a daily basis. Now, real quick, um, let's change uh, the course here and let's look at a couple of other breaking news stories that, that, that are happening. Uh, as I mentioned to you in Tanzania, uh, there are at least 27 people that have died. This is being uh, reported on the Times of Israel News. Tanzania, for those that may not know where that is at, that is just west of Libya. It's in the northern part of the African continent on the Mediterranean. Uh, and um, so not, it's not too far, uh, like I said, just west of Libya and, of course, Egypt, uh, not far from that region either. According to the, the news reports, as one attacker killed in a firefight, ministers say second suspended suspect pursued by police. The article says Tanzania Interior Ministry said two gunmen, excuse me, opened fire on a beach in front of two hotels in the coastal resort city of Su uh, Suisi on Friday afternoon, killing at least 27 people. Uh, a security source in Tanzania told Reuters that one of the hotels targeted was the Imperial uh, Merhaba. Interior Ministry spokesman Muhammad Ali Arori said that one of the gunmen was killed and police were pursuing the other gunmen. Sky News reported that at least seven of the victims were tourists. Tourists told the TV channel they were uh, barricading themselves in their hotel rooms and firefight was, uh, was ongoing. Uh, Sue, some 150 kilometers from uh, Tunis is a popular resort for both Tunisians and Europeans. So no doubt there's definitely going to be a, a large death toll of Europeans in this particular attack. Again, you can follow the rest of this story uh, on Israeli News Live, our, our Facebook page there, where we will uh, be posting uh, these articles here. And, uh, and of course, the, the last article that I wanted to bring to your attention, um, this was, uh, it's been reported on many news sources already. But um, the, um, uh, there has been a beheading and an explosion at a factory in France. The suspect was captured. Um, it says here um, that uh, St. Quentin, uh, excuse me, by an attacker with su uh, suspected ties to French Islamic radicals rammed a car into a gas factory Friday in southeastern France and severed the head uh, and, and a severed head was uh, staked on a post at the entrance, officials said. France immediately opened a terrorism investigation. Uh, two people were injured, authorities said. President uh, Francois Hollande, speaking in Brussels, said the attack began shortly before 10 a.m. when a car crashed through the gate of a gas factory in St. Quentin, Falavir, southeast of Lyon. The car then plowed into a gas canisters, touching off an explosion, he said. No doubt about the intention to cause an explosion, Holland said, calling the attack of a, of a terrorist nature. Uh, again, ISIS has promised that they would, they would expand their operation more and more around the world. 
and they're certainly doing so uh, in through Europe. It is believed that ISIS is already in the United States, so we can expect, no doubt, more terrorist activities will begin to increase, not only as we're seeing now in Europe and France, but it's going to come to the doorsteps of America too. I can only encourage you, as those that are believers in the God of Israel, those that are believers in Yahshua, Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah, this is a time to pray. This is a time to get your loved ones in, to get them to see the way of salvation. Because the biblical prophecy is being fulfilled all around us. I encourage you, recognize your Savior, your Mashiach, Yeshua HaMashiach, and accept what He's done for you. Time is running out.